Welcome back. We're joined now by Susan Harris, a Melville author of Little Copper Pennies. Thank you so much for joining us again today, Susan. Thank you for inviting me again, Julie. So uh, I guess we're going to talk about all the success you've had with your books over the past, I don't know, how many months. When did you write this book? Um, I, I wrote it actually in the month of May and sent it off to the publisher. Then I had to take it back to change up some information. Mm -hmm when the date was shifted. Right. And the ebook was launched in September, the same day I was here. Mm -hmm. And the Little Copper Pennies, the general reader, was uh, published on October 25th. So in under a year, you've had huge success with these books, obviously. Just talk about what you've been doing in the past, um, since November to December, where, where you've been and what you've been doing. Well, it actually all started on September 11th when I was here for the first interview. Mm -hmm. When I went back home, there were voicemails and emails <laughs> um, asking if I would consider being a speaker um, at education for Education Week at several of the schools in the area. Mm -hmm. So Christ, the Teacher Catholic School Division, was the first one to contact me and then it just started catapulting into several <laughs> more presentations so really I have to thank CTV for the coverage that they gave me because um, it really started leading the direction since then I've gone into Regina I've gone into Manitoba mm -hmm. um, I have had books my books are in the Prairie Valley School Division the Regina Public School Division mm -hmm. several Catholic schools division in Alberta in Manitoba in Saskatchewan it's in Newfoundland it's in Prince Edward Island wow. and uh, Ontario so uh, it's <laughs> it's um, it's been a really good journey I've mm -hmm. also book toured and presented in four schools in Manitoba in early November wow. and just on Monday <laughs> I finished up at Grayson School uh, just in Grayson, which is south right. of here. So I think that's going to be the last <laughs> of my school presentations for the year. Right. And then um, I've also been invited to consider being a speaker for Literacy Week in the Kelvinton area. Okay. So that's north of here. Mm -hmm. So this has been huge for you over the past just a little while, obviously. And we'd like to congratulate you because you're a nice local author. You know, you don't really often see that that much and this much success. So, uh, I mean, that's a great job that you're doing and for people who don't know um, why did you want to write this book on pennies? I wanted to write the book on March 29th when the story broke that a penny was going to be eliminated I started to think if this penny could speak what would it say of its 155 years come mm -hmm. next year that it's been in existence I started to think of all the adventures it may have going from person to person of different status going from province to province possibly being taken around the world being held mm -hmm. by um, visitors wide-eyed as to what do the symbols and the emblems on the penny mean mm -hmm. and just the conversations just a very rich history right and having been a previous school teacher I was already in the habit of creating stories to bring across lesson applications mm -hmm. and having a young good daughter I was constantly entertaining her with stories. So why not put them in writing then? I did. Okay, so what is the, the main novel? What is that one all about? Little Copper Pennies is the first book that was created for an adult audience. Right. And it's a tribute and a keepsake to the penny. Mm -hmm. I've interviewed a number of uh, seniors starting from the 1920s, people who had memories from the 1800s, people mm -hmm. in the 1930s and 1950s and 60s. I interviewed grade five students. I talked to business people. I talked to people in religion because, you know, the, the penny is contained in a story in the Bible where really? the woman placed the penny in the uh, treasury, mm -hmm. in the offering plate. And so th there was a number of viewpoints about the penny and, you know, there is significant conflict conversation out there because people like it, people hate it, some are fond of it, some mm -hmm. are indifferent to it. They couldn't be bothered if it's gone. <laughs> you know, it should have been gone yeah. several years right. as far as some people are concerned. So it, there was really an abundance mm -hmm. of information out there. So in addition to real life stories and history, mm -hmm. uh, people's experiences that are contained in this book, there is also um, an educational component. So at at the end of each chapter, for example, there, is, there are three facts about the penny which I've taken f primarily from the Royal Mint website. So mm -hmm. they're historically accurate and true. There are also some penny fun. 
<laughs> because though the penny has no value as a currency, its meaning lies in its daily usage, in our language, mm -hmm. in the traditions we have, throwing a penny in a fountain for right. a wish to come true, yeah. a penny in a cake, picking up a lucky penny, some believe in it, some don't. But there's just a myriad and an abundance of experiences that go along with the penny, in addition to the language. So a chapter 15 talks about a slice of pop culture, and uh, that really has to do with mm -hmm. um, as shiny as a new penny, a penny saved is a mm -hmm. penny earned, a, a number of sayings that is actually echoed in the children's book as well. Yeah, let's talk about the children's book because you were approached after you wrote this book that maybe you should write one to inform kids in, in sort of a a language that they would understand. That's true. My my good friend Davina Fortin, she's a teacher librarian with the Prairie Valley School Division and we mm -hmm. grew up in the same town. We lived in the same town of right. Rosely rather. And uh, she asked me if I would consider um, a picture book that was a corollary to the uh, general mm -hmm. reader. And so I created a 32 page book. I really like this page because it's it's a tribute, it's a keepsake, so I've oh, okay. kept that in mind when for creating Christmas. the <laughs> right in time for Christmas, Christmas yes. gifts. And um, it's quite colorful. And it's what response have you got written. from kids at the schools? Kids love it. Yeah. They, they've been coming up to me in the supermarket. I was at Subway two days ago and a little <laughs> kid was just smiling ear to ear. And I said, have you seen me at school? And he said, yes. And then his sister <laughs> chimed in and his mother said, they've just been talking about you and your penny magic because I do a penny magic trick for all the children. <laughs> oh and boy. Um, so yes, uh, it's been very well received by the schools and mm -hmm. a number of schools have purchased them. People have been exceptionally generous in terms of purchasing the book in Melville, in Yorkton. Mm -hmm. So yeah, let's talk about that a little bit. Where can people uh, find the book or get the book for Christmas if they haven't already? Um, the book is available at Chapters, Indigo, Coles Bookstore in mm -hmm. Yorkton here as well as in Regina. It's available mm -hmm. for order in all stores nationwide and even right. internationally. And if they want to check you out, Susan, really quick, uh, where can they find more information on you and your books? Um, www.susanharris.ca mm -hmm. and books that are ordered from me directly come autographed and come with a complimentary copy of the 2012 penny all bright and shiny from the mint. <laughs> Perfect well thank you so much for being here today Susan and congratulations on all of your success as an author. Thanks again for the part you've played in helping me be a success through the coverage. All right thank you so much.